Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Cupid. I am your host, Marla Martinson, and I have the lovely Anna Naturalista with us today. <laughs> so you guys, Anna is the healthy top chef and edu trainer of all natural living topics, healing recipes, meditation, organic gardening, uh, conscious living. She's also a renowned speaker, author, consultant, minister, and clairvoyant healer. Um, so Anna's passionate purpose is to guide others to achieve their optimum, op optimal health happiness through awareness of one's own happy bubble consciousness. So welcome. You, you sound like me. You do like a million things. I'm matchmaker, crystal healer, author, speaker, yeah. wife, dog mom. <laughs> we, we wear many hats, right? I know. But, it's, uh, it's so exciting. Yeah. Now, are you a Gemini too? I'm a Leo. Oh, okay. Well, that's... I'm a raging um, Leo, yes. <laughs> like Madonna's a Leo. She's a high achiever. You know, those Leos really get things done. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of, you know, part of that, that whole lioness thing. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's a fierce energy that comes out in us, so it's fun. I know, exactly. <laughs> so tell us what you have going on, because you've got this new bubble uh, thing going on with, with, with yeah. I do, you know, all these wonderful things on your new site, so I want to hear what you're doing. Thank you, and I'm so honored to be here, so thank you for letting me share this, because the Happy Bubble Consciousness is something that, um, really, it's something that we all have, and it's something that I experienced when I, I crossed over. I had a near-death experience about, oh gosh, in 2002. All right, we got to hear about that, too. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. That was a you know, massive awakening experience, and in that, it just brought my soul awareness back to realize that... We're more than just this physical body. We have this amazing energy body around us as well that is our knowing system. And it's our aura, our toroidal energy field, whatever you want to call it, we know that it's there. And it's that same energy system around every living thing, every tree, including every planet. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's science, but it's also what we feel before we know what it is. Mm -hmm. So in working with our happy bubble consciousness in that space, it's really important to, and what I want to talk about today was, you know, clearing those blocks so that people can have, you know, better insight, better intuitive guidance, and really be able to follow their own truth and their own, you know, their own body wisdom and their own soul wisdom to be healthy, to be happy, to find a good mate, a good partner, right? Yeah. And um, you really have to get the, the blocks out of your way and out of your life so that you can receive your own guidance and your own information. So that's what I'm really focusing on is taking the last, you know, 15 years of education and content that I've been teaching in live classes and clients and turn that into like a package. So we have like a little starter kit to start off with, make things easy, all the way up to classes and retreats. But really, it's kind of like that focus of, of you know, cleansing your life, not just your body. Well, and as a matchmaker, this is so key because people will come to me and want me to find them the perfect partner and kind of putting it all on me if it doesn't work out, but there's work to do on themselves. There's clearing to do. There's We all have to work on ourselves. We've got a divorce or somebody treated us bad or childhood issues or daddy issues or something. No one's just all oh, perfect, not. you know, maybe one person in a million. <laughs> we all have something we've got to work on. And so I've been having some great results with women coming to me because I do uh, Reiki, crystal healing, uh, work yeah. with the heart chakra and clear some of that energy out so that that they can find someone and I have had two women that I worked with recently and they're now in relationships it like feels yeah. so great if people can realize that it this stuff really works energetically getting in that right spot to find a partner it really does and and you know you touched on such an important topic of of their issues and their stuff they have to get out of their own way and a lot of that happens to be in a lot of the stories that are attached to even you know physical issues in our body or pain or disease or whatever have to do with the mental programs and habits or negative self-talk and those types of things can prevent you from having happiness in a career or relationship or you know whatever whatever your choices are in daily life so yeah it is super think important. kind of self-punishment I, I uh, knew a gal that that was a waitress and she would work she'd pick up every shift so she was working double shifts anybody who wanted her to pick up a shift she'd work up a shift and and the reason was she had kept herself in debt credit card debt and then she'd have to work her herself to the bone to pay the debt and it Ugh. was subconsciously she didn't think she deserved 
to be out of debt, and it was a punishment that she'd have to work night and day to keep paying this uh, debt. Yeah. And that happened on and on and on until she finally, actually, I, I coached her as a friend to get out mm -hmm. of debt, and she's staying out of debt, but she still tends to, to you know, it's some issues that have to be cleared there. Absolutely. Some subconscious about, about not uh, being worthy to find a partner or to be out of debt or to have the job we love. Right. Yeah. yeah, that self worth is a is a huge thing. So yeah, it's really important to you know get those blocks and toxins out of our life so that we can move on to you know positive relationships, whether it's with an intimate partner or you know even with our own family and and friends. And how long do you think this takes? I mean, what when somebody comes to you, what do you what kind of uh, oh, program do trick, you do? Trick question, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone. I mean, everybody's different, right? Everyone is on a different. Um, different phase of their journey, they travel at a different speed, they have different frequency of events that happen in their life, so it's so personalized and different for everybody because we're all so individually unique, but um, really the, the process is very, very similar, you know, and it really starts with the first kind of awakening moment of their work. So how long can it take to clear some of this stuff? Well, working with uh, so many clients and students over the years, it's it's just been so obvious that it's such a personal, unique, individual journey for every person because it just you don't know where they are in their particular path, how fast they want to go to or go through their evolutionary process and journey, um, what hiccups or things they have in their life, what kind of events might happen, you know. So it really, it really depends um, on their personal life and their growth process, and also their willingness to dive in. You know, it's like, are they 100% committed, or do they have one foot still on the other side? There's a lot of factors that go into it, but really the process of unraveling and peeling back those layers and getting to the deeper issues to really heal from within, it's pretty much the same process, you know, right. and it starts I, with awareness. You, you know what happened with me, which I, I always share, is I kept getting in relationships with verbally abusive men or men who didn't treat me right or whatever, and I, you know, I'm on my third marriage now, which is going fantastic, 14 years, you know, married, yes. but the first two and then other relationships, when I, you know, you'd say, oh, the guy was such a jerk, he treated me this way, he didn't love me, he cheated, he... But I had to say, hey, wait, no, I'm the one who picked the guy, I'm the one who married the guy, I'm the one who stayed with the guy, so what is it about me that is selecting these guys uh, or, you know, attracted to this type of thing? And, and I think women, once we take responsibility for our choices, uh, we kind of feel like, okay, we can break this pattern or yeah. feel more empowered, I think, than just saying, oh, the guys are jerks. And that's just it. It's when you get out of, of that, that negative, you know, talk of it's, it's somebody else's fault and taking it outside of yourself. And when it's the awareness of, of going within and, and having that aha moment like you did, go, oh, wait a minute, it's my stuff. Uh -huh. That's why these cycles keep on spinning around me because I'm the common denominator. <laughs> yes, exactly. And right? how do people, can people work with you on Skype and on the phone as well and in person? Absolutely, yes. Okay. They can work with me on Skype. I do um, remote healings and we can do um, online Skype counseling sessions. I do everything from helping people, you know, break through their blocks and cut uh, energetic cords of attachments to different traumas and issues. And we can even help right <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna actually do another video course pretty soon to help people do their own home blessings so that they can remove any kind of toxic energy in their home or old things that might just be holding them back in their in their own living environment as well that's great because let's say you know even when my husband and I if we'd ha had a big fight or something or or I was like mad about a client you know I work in my home my home office and sometimes I have clients who are difficult or upsetting and they say okay now I've got to sage my space or take my yep. drum or clap in the corners break up the energy and, yep. and infuse it back with some good energy because that yucky in the love you know slimy stuff can hang around right it does. It, it, it lingers. And that's, and that's the whole thing about our energy body is that unless we clear in that space, just like cleaning our internal bodies, our energy bodies need to be cleared as well. So that's really important. And you know, as, as, a, as a Reiki healer, that you know, clearing that energy on clients, it makes a difference right in the moment. They feel fantastic. They feel relieved. They feel great. But it's that integration that is their responsibility to carry that healing throughout their life. Yeah. Right, and that's the process that that I'm able to help people with. And part of the Happy Bubble Consciousness program is to really help people integrate the healing that they know that they're seeking, that they need, and then you know 
how to apply it in their daily life. Right, and how you're in, very much into diet and wellness like I am. I'm a vegan. I do my juicing every day. I'm very conscious of what goes in my body. And I feel, I mean, the energy, I feel so much lighter. I feel fantastic. And people, a lot of people are in loops of maybe drinking diet soda or too much alcohol or processed foods. Yes. And uh, how, how, much, how important do you think that diet is in, in releasing some of these blocks too, even getting into a relationship? Oh, absolutely huge. Uh, <laughs> it, it's one of the most important things in our life right now is, and there's a beautiful little uh, infographic going around of like a 1950s mom holding up a Campbell soup can and pointing at it going, ah, you know, super cute. And it says, we're counting calories when we should be counting chemicals. Oh, great. Every yes. single, right? Yes. Every single one of those chemicals in processed food, in tap water, in our personal care products, and anything we put in and on our body is going to affect our moods, our um, reactions, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Are you going to have a negative reaction? Are you going to have a jealous reaction? Are you going to have a positive, loving, compassionate reaction? Because guess what? Those toxins affecting your brain, your psychochemistry, and you know all of your, your body systems are coming from the toxins in your environment. And that, of course, includes in your food. So, obviously, you know, having organic as much as possible, non-GMO, non-processed foods, purified water is going to keep your body vessel clean so that your energy body is, you know, clean and clear as well so that you can, you know, transmit your truth with love in, in your relationships, even if it's, you know, an intimate one or, or not. But And that it's flora, so the fluoride, I changed my toothpaste a couple years ago to non-fluoride. And then, you know, of course, the water I don't use, drink the tap water. And then when I'm at restaurants, I try to avoid their water they bring the t to the table, you know because it's got it in there but it's right we too and this is something that we just found out I just heard about it a couple of years ago but that's very important too right yeah the yeah. fluorosis problem is breaking the getting causing brittle bones <laughs> oh my goodness so yeah. well I have actually a, a special gift for all of our viewers today so they can go to my website and download the free happy bubble starter kit and in that starter kit it's like a super easy checklist all they have to do is print it out and they have a shopping list for all of the natural healthy products to clean their home with mm -hmm. Um, personal care products that are non-toxic, all of the natural things to replace the conventional things that could be toxic and adding you know, negative energies to your body or to your energy system. So that's a free gift that we can give them and it even comes with a little happy bubble meditation. Ooh, I'm going to download that after this. I'll put the links below. Awesome. Now, Anna, I want to, if you're open to sharing this, I got to hear about your near-death experience. That's like, like so exciting yeah. to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what happened? What did you see? Did you see the light? What happened? You know, how did this Lots happen? and lots and lots of lights. Yeah, absolutely. It was really incredible. Well, did I was, you have an accident uh, or what, what happened? Take it from the get-go. Yeah, I, I, was, I was in the Bahamas. I was working with, um, I, was, I had a couple of business bringing uh, a bunch of our potential investors for a little, you know, fun fishing trip. And we went out for, for dinner after the boys came back from the, the boat that night. And um, I've known, I became anaphylactic allergic to dairy when I was 18. And um, that, you know, put me in the hospital. And I had, I didn't have a near-death experience then, but that was when I knew. It was like, it switched overnight. And so ever since then, I had to be really careful and tell every restaurant, every waitress I go to, look, this is an allergy, this is anaphylactic, this isn't, you know, just because I get, I get gas, you know, it's not a lactose thing. <laughs> right. And so here we are, you know, uh, okay, baby, okay, you know, the Bahima Mamas, they're fine, they're just like, yeah, yeah, sure, we'll bring you lobster or whatever. And, and so everyone ordered the same thing, and, and I'm thinking, I don't really eat lobster anyways. I literally had one little bite and kind of just... You know, ate the rest of my veggies and whatever, and something was wrong, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what was wrong. And it had it was like my stomach just started turning, and I couldn't really figure out. You know, I just thought, oh man, maybe I shouldn't have had. It was like a shellfish thing or whatever. And as it turned out, in the Bahamas, they actually boil lobster in milk Ooh. before they. Oh, okay. yeah. So um, I didn't. I didn't actually feel the enzymes or the protein of the milk in my mouth, where I would usually have like an instant reaction and then take a Benadryl or something. So by the time it had gone into my system, my whole body was going into anaphylactic shock. Mm -hmm. So we're leaving the, the 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 restaurant, and I'm starting to shake, and my body's starting to shut down, and I'm starting to swell up, and and I can't breathe, and itching, and everything. And luckily, we had our, our limo driver there, and he obviously knew that I was panicking. I was not being able to breathe. I didn't have my EpiPen with me. It was in the hotel room, <laughs> of course. Yeah. 
So we are hauling tail to get to the to the hospital. And by the time we get to the hospital, I'm gone. I am completely blacked out. And I have like little bits of flashes of things that I remember kind of seeing that I don't remember if my eyes were open or if by that time I was already on the other side, outside of my body watching. But um, my business partner, Jackson, is big, huge, six foot four man. He scooped me up and carried me right into the emergency room. My boyfriend at the time was running and doing something. I, I just, I could see the chaos and feel everything going on around me. Well, we're in a, in a, you know, third world island where there's barely any development and, you know, two that they don't have equipment the the jumper cables didn't work they don't have you know a right kind of iv this that the other i'm slipping i leave i'm out i'm my body's laying there and i'm standing looking over myself behind behind the nurses behind the doctors and i look over and there's my boyfriend at the time screaming and yelling at the doctor saying if you don't save her life yours is over Whoa. and i'm going oh my god oops so you're like i'm i'm seriously thinking oh no this is kind of silly you know because now i'm on i feel no pain yeah. there's no discomfort i have no no like body sensory stuff i have no emotions i have no i'm just like wow whoa trippy like this is i'm watching i'm an observer at that point and then I kind of faded away from the whole hospital scene of watching myself. And in total, they said I was gone for two minutes and 33 seconds. Mm -hmm. So the whole process of, of traveling was, you know, basically we ha I had four angels, two on either side of me, and I had this massive, huge light that was coming up from behind me. And I could just see this glowing essence from behind me, not so much in front of me, but it was a glowing. And then these two beautiful being angels right beside me. And they would open their hands and go like this and like this. And they show me, you know, and then this happened in your life. And here's another experience. And then this person, and then you did this and then da 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 da. -da. And it wasn't, it wasn't so much like, People say they, they saw a movie screen, like a movie playing. Mine was more like like little, like little um, what do they call that when you have like a 15 second little video? Clips. <laughs> little clips. Yeah. Little, little clips, little this. And, and, it, and then as soon as I saw the clip of my mother come up, that one got me. Mm -hmm. And I meet my soul and my, and as soon as I had a thought, it was that thought that slammed me back into my body. And it was that thought of, oh, no, no, I will not come back to this lifetime again without clearing all of my stuff with her first. Mm -hmm. And it was, and I thank her to this day because she is my greatest teacher in this life. And, you know, having difficulties with our, our mothers and parents growing up, it's like, that's our biggest goal to overcome as, as an adult, is really heal that karmic, you know, connection that brought you into this family, right? So this was such a huge, massive experience and an, an awakening and it healed my relationship with my mother instantly because I realized she brought me back. She's the reason I'm here. I have to come back and fix this with her. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it took me a long time to recover physically from that, but so you never left that room. You didn't go into a tunnel or a light or go somewhere else. You stayed in that hospital room with your angels until you went back into the, body. No, they, they took me, they oh. took me out. of. I left the hospital room like that all faded away. And, and they took me into viewing all of these different experiences. Okay. And it wasn't like watching a screen. It was like being in the experience again. Uh -huh. And so were there any bad I, experiences or, or, or were they all good ones or was some bad like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. Like any, you know, shameful ones, you know. You know what's beautiful thing is that when you're in that dimensional space and frequency, there's no judgment. There's no fear. There's no emotional attachment to... You know, oh, I shouldn't have done this, or I should have done something different, or anything. It just is, and it's all perfect, no matter what. Because I'm so it's worried, like, because so many times I said the wrong thing, I hurt people's feelings, I was a bitch, you know, or had a big argument, or you know, in the past. So I'm trying to like be so nice now for the rest 40 years of my life, or whatever I got <laughs> left, so I can make up for not that I was a horrible person, but many times, you know how it is. We all do. We snap yeah. at somebody, or we hurt somebody's feelings, or we did something really terrible so um yeah you know so like, it's ah! being human right it's, yeah, it's yeah. like there there's still that little bit and all of those actions all of those experiences that come out of us really come from that that human ego place of fear right mm -hmm. it's like oh i reacted like that to you because something that you said scared my stuff right right and then you have to forgive yourself for acting out and react you know responding in that negative way mm -hmm. and but they they are the mirrors for you 
we are all mirrors for each other. And that was like the, the beautiful lesson is like, you know, you get to see all of these beautiful experiences and all of our karmic, karmic contracts that come through relationships and friendships and everything are really to heal our deepest issues and our, you know, most important soul purpose qualities, I think. So now when you came, when you came, now this happened in the, what, 2001? When did 2002. This, 2002. Now, when you came back, did you stay in touch with your angels? Are they contacting with you now? Oh, constantly. Absolutely. And I was born very, very psychic, very clairvoyant. And I always had adults around me constantly asking me for, you know, can I go on this trip? Is it safe to do this? Where's my wallet? I lost my this. You know? <laughs> and so I've always had this really beautiful, deep, divine connection. I've always talked to my angels. But from that experience onward, it's, it's where I live and then the world around me kind of exists. You know what I mean? It's more like that is my focal life point. That's where I exist from rather than reaching out to the divine. I'd rather live from the divine and then reach out to, you know, the rest of the world. That's so beautiful. Really, now, what kind of work were you doing before? And then did that change, that experience change you, what you, d you know, decided to do with your life after? Of course. <laughs> yes, because my life, and again, right, these, these uh, events in our life happen as wake-up calls, as messages, as, you know, hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. This isn't your purpose. It's over here, right? And I was, um, I had been, you know, just really pushed into this whole career in finance. And um, the, I was recruited by a finance company that then brought me into timeshare finance. And then resort companies hired me. And then an oil and gas company hired me. And I was literally looking around me going, how did I get over to the dark side? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're good at it, but it's not where you feel good. Oh, yeah. I was, I was so good. They called me the secret weapon. Wow. But, Yeah. But, and, you know, at 20, 23 years old, having over a million dollars in the bank, you think it's pretty good. Wow, yes, yes. But that's also, you know, the, the darkness around it and what the intention of that energy and that money, where it comes from, what it does and everything else. That was such an eye-opener for me to, to know and to realize and to walk away from mm -hmm. because it's those types of things that are the traps in life that will take us down the deepest rabbit holes that, that some people can't crawl out of, mm -hmm. you know? And it was, you know, thanks to that awakening and another, you know, car accident happened that happened shortly after um, that, that forced me to really, you know, take a look at my entire life and what I was doing and where I was putting my energy and how, you know, that energy was then having a ripple effect. Where was that ripple going? And how was that helping people or not? And if it wasn't helping people, I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. So it was really, um, I had to back out gracefully, but it, it took a while, but it was definitely worth it. And, and then that's when you got into the health and wellness and all of that. It just kind of, you just... Health and wellness and healing has been a part of my whole life. My back was broken the first time when I was eight years old. Okay. So that and you're able to share. Because so many people are, they say, well, my purpose. We hear that about what's my purpose. And so many people are in jobs that they hate or don't like. Or it's like, sure. I don't think anyone has, should have to say, oh, my God, it's Monday. Or TGIF, it's Friday. Like, like where people say, Can't that, wait like, to get I, out of every day is the same for me. Because I love what I do. I work from home. I'm so blessed now. I didn't for many years. I waited on tables, which I was never happy about. And did work for somebody else. Once I broke out and did my own thing. Six years ago, I've just never been happier. Um, and then you can have that freedom to go do some other, try some other things. Right. So what would you say to people who, who are in a job that they hate, but they say, gosh, but I have to pay my bills? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, the there's definitely a lot of people, in fact, the most or majority of people that I come across and talk to is that they they are in a situation where they have to keep their job. They have to find, you know, there, there isn't, they don't have another choice right now. And I understand that growing up with, you know, we were, we were a family of four and my dad worked two jobs and he couldn't change for the life of him to support us in insurance. I get it. So when you're unable to leave a situation that you're finding yourself, you know, not liking or negative about, mm -hmm. then you really have to force yourself to make a conscious decision and a conscious effort to find one thing a day mm -hmm. in your personal life that brings you joy, whether that's, and really it doesn't have to come from, oh, I need it for me. What happens when people are seeking joy and seeking happiness, they're seeking to like attain something as if 
something outside of them is going to fix it, right? Whether it, And it comes really from the inside. And when you're putting love out on something is when you feel it the most. And so what I always try to suggest to people is, you know, what is the one thing that you would love to do for someone else? Mm-hmm. Okay. How much would you love to make, you know, a sweet little old grandma who hasn't had a home-cooked meal in three weeks Make her dinner one night a month or something like that. Take it outside of yourself and bring joy to someone else and watch how your attitude changes. Watch how you realize how good you have it because you took the energy outside of your your own little, you know, misery box and put it on somebody else's happy bubble, Mm -hmm. right? That's kind of like... You have, to, you have to shift the, the programming in your mind. It's like, oh, I hear so many people saying things like, oh, life sucks and then you die, kind of an attitude. Why? Right, right. Do you want to condition that for yourself forever? Oh, well, this is the same thing about finding a partner because, um, you know, I'll meet some women who they just want to find a rich man. So it's like looking outside themselves to save them, them to pay their rent or to ha- give them a luck this luxury lifestyle that, you know, first world problems, everyone, you know, a lot of people, yeah, especially ooh. I'm in Los Angeles, you know, Southern California. Yes, I like the luxury lifestyle. So um, when really, it, wouldn't it be better to pare down your lifestyle and pay for everything yourself and do the things you love that rather than looking outside yourself for someone else to provide all this stuff for you, you know, yeah, so no, it's, but- it's, Fulfillment comes from within. within. Full yeah. fill. That's yes. inside. Yeah. <laughs> Not getting from outside. Full, full. And then that great guy, I'll bet, because um, it was so funny, just um, all my life, I always liked foreign guys. I, you know, would be with, if, if I was in a room of 500, there was one foreign guy, like a French guy or Italian or whatever, uh, you know, I would, would find each magnet right there. It would be, and I don't know, I just love, I'm good at other languages. I like travel. I always liked that. You know, I love that. And so then I, that I was like, I'm never not going to marry, um, I'm not going to date any American guys. That's, you know, so I was, when I was wanting to meet somebody, I thought I'm really limiting myself, even though we have a lot of foreigners here in this country. It's like, I'm really, there's a whole big population here that I'm cutting out. So finally I, I opened it up. I said, okay, I'm ready to meet anybody. He can be from America, anywhere. He could be an all American guy, you know, <laughs> that's fine. Once I opened up to it, Guess what? My husband walks in. He's from Mexico City. He, city. He's Spanish, uh, you know, roots. And so I get to speak Spanish now, you know. So yeah. so it was so funny because once you kind of, okay, opened up and not put limits on things or trying to get a certain yeah. thing, then the thing you really wanted will come. <laughs> Absolutely. And I always say that to my clients too. It's like, don't put conditions and expectations and, and, you know, barriers on what you're asking for and for what you want in, in your life, you know, ask for the best that you can possibly think of or better. Right. And more, Yes. you know, it's, it's like, keep it coming. It's, it's really magical when you can live in that, in that positive space of, you know, being able to, to manifest your, your positive energy anywhere and in anything. I love it. Well, Anna, thank you so much for stopping by and sharing all of your magical energy with us. <laughs> thank you so much, Fun Marla. All right, I'll see you soon. Okay, take Bye. care. Thanks.